9-11 has always been a heavy subject for many people, and rightfully so. It was a terrible day where the United States came under a terrorist attack. Four planes were hijacked, and nearly 3,000 people were killed. Despite the horrors experienced that day, it also brought to light the many good deeds that humanity is capable of. The many stories of heroic actions during that time, those who saved others' lives, those who sacrificed their own, and those who bravely rushed in, knowing that they'd likely never come back, prove that even during our worst periods in history, we still have the ability to do right. One of the biggest examples on this day, arguably, is that of the actions of the passengers on board United Airlines Flight 93. We all know the story, and we all know how it ends, but we always remember the sacrifice they made to save those on the ground. And that's exactly what Paul Greengrass set out to accomplish when he started production on United 93. This isn't your typical movie-going experience. This is raw, unrelenting emotion, gut punch after gut punch, until the final credits. I made the mistake of watching this by myself the first time, and I can safely say it is one of the best movies I have ever seen. And since watching, I've been looking into what makes it so powerful and so effective, and one of the things I can say for sure is the music. Of course, everyone knows that the soundtrack can make or break a movie. It's supposed to set the tone for what's to follow, or what's going on in the moment. And United 93 uses a surprisingly little amount of music during its runtime. But I think that works to this film's advantage, and I could talk in depth about the entire soundtrack. But instead, I want to focus on one specific track. One track that I think is the most effective in this movie, and one that I think did the best job. That, of course, being the track for the climax. The final track in the movie before the credits. Simply titled, The End. Now, from this point on, we will be delving into spoilers. So if you are interested in watching this movie, and again, I highly recommend you do, please don't watch further and... Find a streaming service that has the film, or buy it on YouTube, DVD store, sit down, watch the movie for yourself. Before we begin, I need to preface everything in this film up to this point. We get introduced to our terrorists, we get introduced to our passengers, we get introduced to the air traffic control behind the scenes. Everyone boards their plane at Newark, they take off, and as the day progresses, planes are hijacked and redirected to their targets. United Airlines Flight 93 is taken over about halfway through the movie. Meanwhile, various officials involved are trying to piece together what the hell is going on and who's next, all while trying their best to find a way to protect the country. We last follow them after the impact of American Airlines Flight 77 on the Pentagon, to which then we only focus on those on board United Airlines Flight 93. And rightfully so, as there's no more planes hijacked in the sky, and it's the only plane remaining. For the most part, the soundtrack in the movie has been tense, has been having you on the edge of your seat, wondering what's happening next, what's going to happen next. It isn't until the second to last track in the movie where we finally get some kind of emotion other than fear, anticipation, distress, and the likes. The passengers are planning the revolt, the hijackers are getting angry and more agile, while everyone else is crying, praying, and saying goodbye to their loved ones. It's a powerful scene that is really well done and puts into perspective what those on United Flight 93 might have actually been experiencing. As all the phone calls finish up and the prayers end, we hear the passengers eagerly anticipating their moment to strike back. There's nothing but the sound of the wind in the plane and the whispering of the passengers, giving you that feeling of uncertainty, anxiety. And then the moment comes. <laughs> It's at this point in the film, all the accumulating fear, anger, and resentment from the passengers finally overflows, and they have to act. The music starts out simple enough, a droning bass line and horns blaring. Then it picks up with the strings, and then finally drum beats as the passengers begin their attack, assaulting the first hijacker. Get 
Now reaffirmed, they begin their mad dash to the cockpit in hopes to take back the plane. The horns and strings cut their two note chords as Ziad starts jerking the control column from side to side, hoping to throw off the passengers. The strings playing a single droning tone, with the horns playing ominously low. Cockpit warnings blare as the brass plays two new notes in tandem, both ominous as if to say, you haven't faced the greatest challenge yet. At this point, we hear the rat to tum of the percussion as the passengers are thrown to the ground, yet their determination unwavering. The hijackers are throwing everything they have at the passengers, what they have on board, and the plane itself. The steady beat of the percussion ever persistent. <laughs> Ahmed Al Nami takes control of the food cart, charging at the passengers in hopes of disrupting them. It's here where we change VPN. The hijackers begin to panic. They know they are outnumbered. They've stirred up the hornet's nest, and now they're reaping the consequences. The strings play a high droning note as the tone begins to shift. The tables are turning, and everyone knows it. As if driven by their determination, the score's intensity increases. The tone is dismal as the passengers overtake the second hijacker. For a brief second, nobody knows if they will be successful in subduing him. But soon they succeed, and it's on to the final obstacle, the cockpit access door. The music shifts once more into a sound of urgency. It's all or nothing. strings play relatively low chords. The audience is wondering, will they actually breach the cockpit? They're doing their hardest to even have a sliver of a chance of survival. Neither the passenger or the hijackers know what will happen next. The pure fear and adrenaline flowing through everyone's veins. Time is running out, and they know it. The cockpit door finally begins to give way, and the strings and horns become bittersweet, lighter in tone. There's now a chance of reclaiming the plane, of surviving, but Ziad has one last trick up his sleeve. He knows he can't succeed in reaching his target, but if he's going down, he's taking everyone with him. As the passengers finally get into the cockpit, the music swells. You're hoping that they grasp under the control column, that they can pull the plane out of its inevitable spiral. plane violently rocks from side to side, throwing everyone about, the hope turning to uncertainty. The passengers losing their grip. The plane begins to dive and they can't pull out of it. The struggle has taken its toll. The plane is now inverted and there's nothing the passengers can do. The music dips and then crescendos as the engines were and the plane rockets closer and closer to the ground. The horns and drums fade out, almost inverse to the plane's plummet, before finally... If music makes or breaks a scene, or makes or breaks a movie, then this music definitely makes the movie. The use of the strings and horns to resonate within yourself, to pull at your heartstrings, 
to give you that hope that despite you know how it ends, that they still have a chance to retake the plane. The pounding drums beating like heartbeats, gripping you in the moment as if you were actually there. And after all the instruments fade out, leaving you with the final sting of the strings, it brings you back into reality. They didn't succeed in taking back the plane, but they were successful in taking down their attackers. And yet, deep down, you still wished they were able to survive. And to that, United 93 becomes a truly powerful movie. When approaching a historical event to adapt into a movie, you have to treat it with the utmost respect and try not to deviate too much in terms of history. And to that, Paul Greengrass certainly succeeds. Of course, there is some artistic license taken, as this movie was released before the official report. As such, all he could go on was what was known at the time and what resources were available. The many independent studies that have been conducted since the film's release show a few areas of what the film got wrong, but the film still holds up regardless of these flaws, and it's still one that I highly recommend. Although, I would also recommend to be emotionally prepared. That's all I have for now. Thank you for watching, and stay safe.